So my name is Mark Austin. I'm a geologist by profession. Um, I'm also project managing the, the Clock Eye Gold um, project in North, North Wales. And I've also been recently appointed as a COO of the company. I think it's fascinating. I do, I've always enjoyed working for the smaller companies. Um, I've been through the, the corporate grind of the large companies. Um, I think working with a smaller company, uh, you get far more responsibility, far more um, job satisfaction, far harder work as well, um, um, far more accountability. So I, I've really enjoyed, enjoyed it, not just the small company, but um, the, 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 uh, the, the um, support from the executive. George has been fantastic in terms of giving me my head with, with the project. Um, so it's, it's been very, very, a very nice experience for me. Yes, um, I've, I've, I've worked, as you say, from, from funny enough, three, of the, three of my ex-bosses have been Greek, Greek Cypriots, which is quite <laughs> strange. Um, there seems to be some sort of uh, um, attraction to Greek Cypriots there for me. But yeah, I've, I've worked, as I said, small companies um, and, tiny, and tiny little mines. Um, I've worked for a company, JCI, as their consulting geologist in charge of their geological department. Um, but I guess my, my, my two highlights is one was being appointed as consulting geologist of JCI. That was a, a good, a very high position for me. And the second one was then opening a small gold mine up in Kenya, of which I spent um, about six years, seven years of my life doing that. Um, that was basically in southwest Kenya, in a, in a traditional Maasai area. So there were not just geological challenges and mining challenges, but community challenges as well. Um, and also governmental challenges, as it was the first gold mine to be opened in Kenya, underground gold mine. So we had to take the government by their hand and, and lead them through the whole, their own process because they'd never tested their own process. So that was, was, was very, very interesting for me and, and very satisfying for me. It's, it's going very well, uh, bearing in mind that there was no infrastructure, that we had to make things safe underground. It was an old mine. It's been stood for many, many years. Um, you know, we had to put air and water in there. We had to get access into there. Um, we had to get permission from landowners as well. So there's been a lot of work, um, but by, not by and large. In fact, it has gone very, very well for me. It's better than I expected it to be. And it's going, as, as we speak now, it's going full tilt. Well, as you say, I've spent most of my time on the clock eye deposit. Um, got to get that up, go up and going. That's critical to the, the strategy of the company. Um, I haven't physically been out to Greenland yet. Um, I'm familiar with, with, with the, um, the deposits, with, with the um, assessments of those deposits. Tule, which is heavy mineral sands. Um, we've got 8 million tons of, of total heavy mineral uh, content there, which 20% of that is, is ilmenite. Uh, which gives you about a 9% in situ content of ilmenite, which is really, really, really high. If you compare that to um, heavy mineral sand deposits, which are actively mining in East Africa, they're about 2.2% in situ. So, so Tule is about four, four, four times uh, better uh, percentage content in heavy mineral sands than they are. Okay, they've got zirconium and rutile, uh, which adds to their basket of goods. We've only got the ilmenite, but still, uh, very high percentage of ilmenite makes it a very exciting project. Um, the resource as well um, has only been drilled down to the top of the permafrost. Um, we need to go back there now and use sonic drilling to go through the through the permafrost and find the bottom of the, the heavy mineral sands. That will almost definitely increase the resource base. Um, and once we've done that, then we can proceed to an economic study. Um, Amit Sok, which is the graphite deposit. Um, it's previously been mined um, up to 28% uh, total graphite content, which is the world, world's highest content. Um, what's exciting as well for me is that in the initial exploration stages, in the, um, in the stream sediment sampling, some good gold grades were picked up. Um, there is a gold mine to the northeast uh, of, of, the, of the license, so perhaps we've got some sort of gold play there as well. So it's gold and uh, graphite and amosite. Melville Bay, which is the iron ore deposit. Um, at the moment, we've got a resource of 67 million tons, at just over 31% iron content, uh, it's hematite. What excites me about that is it correlates geologically with the, the Mary River deposit, high grade deposit in northern Canada. So I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, at the moment, most of the resource is in the inferred, 
we need to upgrade that to indicated where we can and do some step out drilling to increase the resource base to in excess of 100 million tons. If we get to that, then we then can go into the economic study there as well. And then finally, London, uh, Ireland, which is lead, zinc, silver. Um, it's based in, in the Limerick area. Um, we know it's right in the smack bang middle of, of the, uh, the mineralized zone there, which extends all the way up to Tara in the northeast of the country. Um, there's all the big players are, have got their licenses around us as well. So we, we're in very good company there. We've done some drilling, some surface work, um, and the more needs to be done, reinterpret what we've already got. But I think with all the big players there who are also getting good results in their drilling, I think that bodes well for us in the future as well.